Coach Schumann here. We're going with today and a topic that will be near and dear to everybody's heart. I'm here with David Bruce. We're going to talk mortgages, specifically how to put more money in your pocket by uh, accelerating your mortgage payments and being able to put you in a better position to pay less interest, put more money in your pockets. We all love that. This is the guru to talk to you about it. He's written several bestsellers on it. This is David Bruce. Welcome to the Successful Life Podcast. Thank you for having me. This, this is a topic that everybody who's an adult has an interest in, okay? And um, mortgages, how to get mortgages, how to find the right mortgage, especially in today's economy. Real estate prices were through the roof, probably still haven't come down yet, but obviously interest rates are going up, um, which is directly affecting people's pockets. And we want to discuss all of that stuff. Before we do that, um and David owns Accelerated Banking, and we'll get into all of that uh, shortly. But before we do that, let's get a little bit into your background, who you are, where you come from, and how you got to this point. Sure. Well, uh, I, am, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and I've been a mortgage broker and in the mortgage industry for almost 30 years. And what I've done over my career is I, I used to chase interest rates. I used to you know, think about the mortgage as what everybody knows as to how to – finance real estate, because that's what most people think. You either have to pay cash for a property, which not many people can do, or you're now stuck getting a mortgage. And what I've come to learn is that we don't want to use mortgages to finance real estate. We actually want to use home equity lines of credit. So throughout my career, um, I've made that transition when I learned about this. I actually closed my mortgage company. I've owned four mortgage companies throughout my career as a mortgage broker. And I said, I am dedicated to helping people do things the right way. So I closed my mortgage company and started focusing on education and helping people become aware that there may be a better way. And that is by using home equity lines of credit to finance real estate instead of a mortgage. So that's very interesting. Um, and I want to dive into that specifically. But before we do that, um, explain a little bit how the mortgage process works. So um, explain it almost as if I, if I would be a new homeowner, so or looking to be a new homeowner. So people are very confused a lot of times with, because you always see uh, cash buy, especially in the distressed properties, right? Cash only. Um, how do all these people have cash sitting around to be able to buy cash only, or are they getting financing to provide a cash only offer? And then, when people are utilizing mortgages, you know, what is the process that they should begin to go through? And it, 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 but before we do that, if you explain the difference between a cash only offer, how that works, and then being able to take out a, a mortgage. Right. Well, like you said, there's really, most people think that there's two options when it comes to buying a property. So let's just say you're going to buy a residential, you know, looking for a home to move into for your family. And you are thinking, okay, I don't have the money to pay cash. So some people do. And typically what they're doing is they're accessing lines of credit. They're accessing other investment accounts where they're gathering that money that they're using as cash. Um, And if you don't have that ability, then now you're looking at what mortgage programs are available, what down payment requirement is going to be available, what credit scores do I have to have, you know, what do I qualify to purchase, you know, based on the payment that I can afford in order to determine what your maximum purchase price would be. And you're going through that analysis. Uh, but what we want to do, let people be aware is that there's actually a third option. And what people don't realize is that you could actually purchase a home using a home equity line of credit on day one and avoid using a mortgage altogether. And because the difference being is that amortized mortgage is, uh, is really the enemy. It's tied to the amortization schedule, which determines the monthly payment. But then it's got you paying all that front loaded interest in those first five, seven, ten years. And your balance is really not decreasing much. So what we want to do is we want to change that by using the home equity line of credit to purchase, which becomes the tool that allows us to introduce our cash flow and change the way that interest is is calculated all the way down to the daily level. So realistically, when possible, you would want to say, hey, before I get a mortgage, let me look and see if I can qualify and if the math works in my favor, because these are cash flow strategies. And it's not going to work for everybody. So some people are going to need a mortgage as a starting point, and then they can graduate to what we do with home equity lines of credit later. 
or maybe they're in a position that they can purchase with that home equity line of credit on day one. But the main thing is it's just like going through the pre-qualification process either way. You have to find a lender, meet the credit requirements, be able to document your income, have a down payment requirement, and from there, that's really going to let you know what your options are. Very interesting. Okay, so a home equity loan, which typically is used after someone, in, if they got a mortgage, uh, or if they even if they bought a house with cash, in order to do improvements, typically. Um, so how would someone go and get a home equity loan for actual house purchase? Right. So, it, and that's the thing is most people think of, when you think of a home equity line of credit, and we have to be careful because there is a difference between a home equity loan and a home equity line of credit. We want to be using a line of credit. Um, okay. And most people, you're right. Most people already own a home. They've got equity. They want to access that equity. So they go and they have a mortgage, but then they say, okay, in addition to my mortgage, let me access the equity, and now I have a second lien position home equity line of credit. They can draw money out of that to pay for home improvements or consolidate debt or for whatever purposes they need. Um, but what we're talking about is something that's just its kind of a bank secret, really, is that the banks would rather put you in that amortized mortgage because it's more profitable for them, and very few banks will actually allow you to purchase on day one with the home equity line of credit. And that's what's known as a first lien position home equity line of credit because it's the only loan that you have on the property when you acquire the property. Okay, so if, if I'm going to a bank and I wanted to purchase a house, uh, let's use like a real world example here. Instead of me going and getting a mortgage, I would go to a bank and then apply for a home equity line of credit. That's correct. That's correct. And so... Would I be required to do a down payment like we normally do with a mortgage? Or is that something that you fund the whole entire house? How, how does that work? The bank is going to require, the, the banks that we've researched and the ones that we work with require a 10% down payment. So again, that means that it's not going to be for everyone because everybody may not have that 10% down payment. They may need to use, a, you know, maybe a veteran that's going to use the VA program uh, that requires 0% down payment, or they may need a conventional loan that has a 5% down payment or an FHA loan that has a 3.5% down payment. So the down payment requirement is higher with 10% down, but it gives you that tool that allows for a simple interest calculation and avoids the amortization schedule because the amortization schedule is the end. Right. And so is that home equity line of credit typically a uh, lesser time period. So I saw you talk about five to seven years. Is that is that what the typical time frame is on a home equity line of credit? Well, the line of credit could be anywhere from 10 to 30 years to where you can draw. It's called the draw period, which okay. is the amount of time that you're able to take money in and take money back out of that line of credit. Um, but the goal being and the reason that we want to use that line of credit is because it allows us to introduce cash flow strategies. So think of it like this. If you have a mortgage and you get your paycheck today, where are you going to put that paycheck? You're going to deposit that paycheck in your checking account. And that is basically giving the bank a free loan while you're being charged interest on your mortgage. But if you have a home equity line of credit, that line of credit becomes your checking account. It becomes your savings account. It becomes the debt that you have on the house. So when you deposit your paycheck today, so let's just say an example, easy numbers, you have a $100,000 balance this morning, you get a $5,000 paycheck today, if you deposit that $5,000 in a checking account, you gave the bank a $5,000 loan basically for free and your money's, you're going to be charged interest on $100,000. But if you deposit that $5,000 into your home equity line of credit, tonight when interest is calculated, your balance went from $100,000 to $95,000. So tonight you're only going to be charged interest on $95,000. And it may not sound like much, but over time, anything that we can do to change the way that interest is calculated and avoid paying interest, because this is about interest avoidance. How do we avoid paying unnecessary interest? Those little things add up over time. And then we're treating it as our checking and savings account. So instead of letting your money build up in a savings account, which is, again, is giving a free loan to the bank, we want to park that cash. We want to park that savings to offset the balance so that we can avoid interest. Okay. So I get a $5,000 uh, paycheck. I have a $100,000 home equity loan. Obviously, I need to be able to live and survive, right? So I'm going to take some of that money and put it into my checking account. Um, 
they're not going to put the whole five thousand dollars in, but let's say they're able to put a thousand in each time. What what over time? How does that savings look? Let's say they're putting a thousand each time in their paycheck. Um, what does that savings look like over time? Well, here's the great thing about that: you can actually put the full five thousand because you don't want to put anything in the check. Got because it. Because the the HELOC has a checkbook, it has a debit card, it has online bill pay, it has all the functionality that you're used to with a checking account. So, so you're accessing. So you're okay. So I. Uh, so now, right? Because you pay it down to ninety-five thousand, you have that five thousand dollars that you have access to to live. Correct. Right. So tonight the balance is ninety-five thousand. I pay interest on ninety-five thousand. Tomorrow I spend a thousand. My balance is ninety-six thousand. I pay interest on ninety-six thousand. Next week I get another paycheck at five thousand. I take my balance down to ninety-one thousand. I pay my bills. It goes back up. I get more deposits. It goes back down. But it's because you're doing that, you're able to, the goal is to get the balance as low as possible, as fast as possible, and keep it as low as possible for as long as possible. You're going to spend money. But what you just don't want to do is there's no, there's no reason to put the money in the checking account. That's just an unnecessary step at this point. And because that's not allowing you to use your money to avoid paying interest. That makes a ton of sense. I never thought about it in that way ever. That's incredible. Um, it's funny because you're taught, even when you take out like equity lines of credit, you, you know, you have your checking account and this is obviously from the bank side because it's to their advantage for you to have the checking account and for you to have the equity line credit because you're paying on both. Right. Yeah. So, so you're paying on both ends by, by eliminating the checking account, using the equity line as your checking account, you're paying down the balance over time on your home. And then you're actually using the bank to your advantage versus the other way around, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you get it. Yeah, that's it. And, and the, the amazing thing is, is this, we teach multiple strategies. So that can be done in the example that I just said, where you buy your house with a first lien position HELOC. But there's millions of families out there right now that have a mortgage and a second lien HELOC, the traditional like we talked about in the beginning, but they're still using a checking account because they don't know any better. They've never heard of the strategy. Nobody's ever told them to skip the checking account and put the money directly into the HELOC. Um, so they're missing out each day on that opportunity to avoid interest. And the little things add up over time. I mean, I've moved money into my HELOC that saves me 17 cents a day. Doesn't sound like much, but that's 17 cents today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. And that means money's going to principal faster. And if I can reduce the principal, then now I'm gonna be charged less interest. So it gets that snowball going and that's where the math, because this is a math problem. That's where the math really kicks in in your favor. That's very interesting. It also probably teaches you to live within the means of your paycheck for quite a good bit, bit amount of time instead of extending yourself beyond it, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The, the, the heartbeat of this is budget. I mean, this is the cash flow strategy. So it's about every dollar that comes into your budget that goes into the HELOC. It's every dollar that goes out of your budget that comes back out of the HELOC. But it's that positive cash flow, that money that stays behind each month, that thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a month that you leave behind as your savings account, because that's the best parking lot for your for your for your cash for your savings. And then over time, that makes such a huge difference. Now, do you would you then? Um, so so I'm trying to think about it from a side by side example. What would that look like over time? utilizing this strategy versus taking out a traditional mortgage what like off that hundred thousand for example right and that that five thousand what would that look like as far as a side-by-side -side, um cash flow advantage for you it's going to depend on cash flow because every family is going to be different their income's different their budget's different so what we have is a calculator that allows you to go in and look at your balance because the balance is the enemy and time and balance are truly the enemies because the amount of interest you pay over the life of a loan is based on the balance and how long that balance exists. So being able to um, do it this way allows you to do that. So for comparison, um, I did a comparison recently on a $400,000 mortgage, purchasing a mortgage at 5.625% and um, a $400,000 home equity line of credit, both at the same interest rate. And the home equity line of credit pays off in about eight years, a little under eight years. It saves a couple hundred thousand dollars of interest. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but saves a couple hundred thousand dollars of interest. And 
over the mortgage. So you pay off much faster. You have a much smaller interest expense over time. And the thing that matters is, see, and this is what people have been brainwashed for. This is the way people have been trained and kind of tricked by the banks, is the banks want us to focus on interest rate. Because I could ask you, what's your interest rate? I could be at work or ask people at church or wherever, what's your interest rate? And they probably know their interest rate. Because a lot of people are proud of it. Hey, I refinanced. I got 3% interest rate. Woo, yeah, all right. But what they don't know when you ask is, what is your tip? What is your total interest percentage? And that is what is the total interest you're going to pay over the life of the loan. Well, that tip may be at that 5.625 on that $400,000 loan on a mortgage. That tip is 119%, which means you're going to pay back about $419,000 to borrow 400 or 490,000 of interest. And so you're buying one house for you and one house for the bank. Now, with the, with the cash flow strategies, and because you're paying it off so much faster, you're not only reducing that tip, you're, you're paying it off faster, you're saving interest, you're reducing that total interest percentage. And when you avoid interest, you're actually also reducing your effective interest rate. So there's so many different things that happen when you use strategies to do everything you can to avoid paying unnecessary interest. Well, that if effective interest rate is a big thing. Because I always, I always see people when they say, oh, you know, I sold my house. Let, let's say I bought my house for 500000 sold it for a million. But if over 30 years they paid back an additional 600000 they actually lost $100,000 over 30 yeah. years on that house, right? Yeah, it's 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 weird how people do that. Again, it's just what the banks want you to think of. They don't want you to they don't want you to think deep enough because then their secrets get exposed. But what happens there is, <clears throat> you know, the example all the time I hear people, oh yeah, I bought this house for five hundred thousand. I lived there for four years. Sold it for six fifty. I made one hundred fifty thousand dollars. No, you didn't. You paid taxes. You paid. You know, if it was a business and you're running a P and L, you paid taxes. You paid interest. You paid cost to to sell the property. You got to do the true math. You're not doing the true math. So we want to get to the true math because this is a math problem. That's right. This is this is a hundred percent a math problem. I've always thought about that with house, the houses as well. It's like when people say they sold their house, they made X profit. Did they? If if they have to pay back the whole entire loan, um, well, essentially they maybe you know most of them just roll it over into a new loan in a new house. So they never really realize what they're losing, right? Is that is that one of the the, the whole tricks of the trade, right? Oh, I buy a house. Yeah. Let's say I, you know, during a pandemic, prices went through the roof, right? So, um, especially where I live, I live in New Jersey, prices went really hot. So you bought a house for five hundred thousand. You turned around two years later, sold it for seven fifty. But you would have to pay all that loan back, which might end up being one point one million. Instead of that, obviously, you have to have somewhere to live. So you're now rolling that loan into a new loan in a new house, right? Well, and that's one, of, that's one of the traps. There's really a couple of traps that people fall for consistently. And that is, number one, they chase the interest rate or they move. Number two. So number one, you know, you've got a good interest rate. You're, you're not understanding these cash flow strategies. The banks have convinced you that interest rate is the yardstick that you should be paying attention to. You're at 4.5% rate. You've been in the loan for four years. Here comes a three and a half percent rate offered to you. Oh, great. That saves me $200 a month on the monthly payment. Sign me up. You pay closing costs. You lower your payment $200 a month. You lower your interest rate to three and a half percent. But you started right back over at 30 years all over again. You started that amortization schedule at maximum interest. And now you took your, you, you may think you took a step forward. But if you do the true math, you may find out and you pay closing costs you may find out that you took a step backwards. So people fall for that constantly. I fell for that for a lot of years, even as an owner of a mortgage company, because I didn't understand these cash flow strategies. And then the second thing is you move. You know, the, the family, you, you're in, you buy a house, you live there for five years, you have another child, you, you move for a job, you sell your house, you take that equity, Ooh, I got some equity, you know, I got some equity from the sale, I got money for my down payment, I go into the new home, but I'm starting at 30 years all over again. And then, oh, then a couple of years later, they refinance. Then a couple of years later, they take out a home equity line of credit, but not to use our strategies, but for consumption. Because that's what the banks want. Home equity lines of credit, the second lien position, the banks sell that for consumption, debt consolidation, home improvements, you know, toys. And people consume that equity 
instead of using cash flow strategies that allow you to accelerate your equity and minimize your interest. Incredibly fascinating. Okay, so I want to unpack a little bit the um, the home equity, how someone can utilize it as well, not just obviously for the home, but this is something they could also use from a cash flow standpoint to invest in themselves in in, in 401ks, possibly uh, stocks and, and bonds, right? You could utilize, how, how would all that work? And what are some of like the side-by-side benefits of that? Right. So one of the other, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the other things that you want to take in consideration is, and, and I'm going to go back to when you said at the beginning about somebody paying cash for a home. If you bought a $500,000 house for cash, fantastic, congratulations, but you just locked up $500,000 that you don't have access to. So right. you've given away your liquidity. So instead, what you would want to do is you could go ahead and pay cash and buy that home or use a home equity line of credit to purchase the home, but you want to have a lot of credit. You want to have access to that equity because that's liquidity. That gives you access to that money at a moment's notice without having to refinance, without having to ask for permission. It's opportunity. You have a check, let's just say in that case, you've got a $400,000 line of credit and you can buy a $400,000 line a check today. Now that could come in handy. You lose your job, you've got access to money. You, um, you find an investment, somebody comes up and has got a great investment opportunity, you can, you can do that. You can have down payment money to acquire income producing assets like investment properties. You have money to start a business. You have money to, you know, instead of going out and getting a car loan and financing the car for seven years on an amortization cycle or a schedule in order to have a monthly car payment, you could take money out of the home equity line of credit and pay cash for the car and then continue to use cash flow strategies to pay down that balance rapidly. So it's about security, it's about opportunity, and you never want all of your equity trapped. So access to equity equals opportunity. How do you qualify for a home equity loan without, because obviously with with a mortgage, they're using the house as collateral, right? What would they use for a home equity loan in, in that case? It's still going to be the it's still going to be the value of the home. It is. Yeah. So yeah. it's still like right now you can get a like um, you can get a loan line of credit in the first position up to ninety percent of the value of the home. So just like you need a ten percent down payment, that means you got your financing ninety percent. So it's it's not in addition to it's a, instead of. So it's not 90% in addition to my mortgage that I have. It's 90% instead of my mortgage because I want to take that mortgage. I want to get rid of it. Think of it as a refinance. I want to refinance my mortgage. But instead of asking for a new mortgage, I want a home equity line of credit instead. And that, that's how you, you convert. If you already have a mortgage, you can convert it into a home equity line of credit. Interesting. It's, it's, it, now, is there pushback? So let's say I walked in. And I said, you know, buying a home, I just want a home equity line of credit on 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 the home that I'm going to purchase. Our banks, or, or the person you meet with, um, are they equipped to answer those questions on that, or do they have to come to someone like you to really help with that process? In most cases, they need somebody like me because number one, the banks don't know. A lot of the loan officers, number one, they don't even know this exists. Number two, the bank may not offer the correct product because not very few, very few banks offer the correct product the way it needs to be structured in order for us to get maximum efficiencies. And that's one of the things that we've done is research hundreds of banks across the country. Um, and number two, th- this is the sad part, is even if that bank does offer and they have that, that perfect product, that loan officer is probably going to try to put you in mortgage because their commission is going to be much higher. Much higher, so they're gonna fight. So that that's where you really come in, um, and and bridge that gap, which is which is incredible. Um, so, what typically, if you come in, and, and forgive all my question because it's it's uh, honestly it's a fascinating topic. It's funny because we okay. talked about before, perfect. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Most I, I have never heard of it. Um, it, it it's a fascinating topic. When I read about it. You know. It, you can get a base understanding, but you really don't know until you talk to you really like the in-depth amount of it. And so it's funny because we talked before the show about, did I do, you know, I read the research on it, but now I'm really understanding what you're talking about. And now I'm talking to you in person on it. Um, does this, first of all, does this aha moment happen a lot when people get on the phone and, and start having this conversation with you? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, <clears throat> excuse me. That's what it's all about is, 
excuse me, number one, understanding that there may be something different. Number two, being willing to learn and listen because some people are, oh, that's garbage. That's too good to be true. That's not possible, but it is. It just have, it's different. It's just not mainstream because the banks don't want you to do this. They'd rather give you that mortgage. They want you to be in debt. They want you to be in car loans. They want you to be able to do all these loan products that they have. That's profit. So when they, when they learn about this, and, and what we do is we offer a free consultation because what we do is we provide education, consultation, bank research to get the right, the right tool, the HELOC is the right tool that you need to implement the cash flow strategy and then ongoing support to be successful using the strategy to make sure you're being maximum efficiency and maximizing the opportunity. So when we have a free consultation, we're going through someone's budget, we're going to the calculator, we're looking at potential results, and we're seeing, you know, what can be done. And to be perfectly honest, this is not going to work for everybody, because again, this is a math problem. If you're living paycheck to paycheck and there's no positive cash flow at the end of each month, this could actually be worse than your mortgage, because if you're not able to reduce the balance, then you're not going to save interest. So we right. go through that discovery process. We call it a discovery call. And um, we go through the numbers, we run the calculator, and we determine if there's going to be enough benefit or savings that would justify this. We answer questions and make sure people get an understanding. And we have multiple strategies. So we're comparing which of the strategies that we teach are going to be the best for your unique situation. And then from there, yes, the goal is to not just have a light bulb moment. Um, in a lot of cases, it's like that... Um, that light that's out in front of, a, of a, a movie theater that shoots the light up into the sky. You know, it, we don't want to just have a flickering light bulb. It is a what the hell just happened moment. Wow, how did I not know this? And then the math, when the math makes sense, it, it really is. It's, you know, I tell people I'm joking kind of, but it's kind of like good luck sleeping the night. Absolutely, yeah. So, it, it, and there's one other quick thing that I think is interesting as well. So, if you take out this home equity loan, do you recommend they take out more than they w- what they would have taken for a mortgage, or do you recommend them taking the exact amount that they would have taken for a mortgage to give them like a bridge of t- you know what I'm saying in the beginning, so they have they don't they're not up against the edge of the equity right from the get go. There's some bridge of money. Th- does that make sense, or is yes, it absolutely whenever when possible? I recommend to get when you go through the process, get the largest line of credit that you possibly can. Got it. Because you don't pay for it unless you use it. It's like a zero. It's like a credit card that has a zero balance. There's no payment. You only pay interest on the balance. So if you only needed three hundred thousand dollars to make your mortgage go away and convert it to a HELOC, but you got a five hundred thousand dollar HELOC, now you have the ability to write a check for two hundred thousand at your convenience without asking permission, without reapplying, without waiting. It's ready. Now here's the thing: you have to be disciplined. You can't be that person that's going to say, ooh, I can write a $200,000 check. I want that Harley. And six months from now, I want that fast boat. Right. And next year, I want an RV. And next year, you know, you keep you, you make progress. You take a step backwards because you buy something. It's not about giving you access to go buy all the toys you ever dreamed of. Now, it doesn't mean you can't go do that and enjoy that and have the quality of life. Because we're not asking people to change their lifestyle. This is about doing what you're doing now. Just stop giving the bank a free loan every night. Use your money for your benefit every single day to avoid paying interest that you should not be paying. That's incredible. If there's one, uh, well, let, let's go through this. So if there's one thing that you could advise people within this process to make sure that they do in order to put them in the best position possible, what would that be? It would be budgeting. Budgeting and cash flow management. This is all about cash flow management. How to, how to make sure that you're not living above your means, how you're not going backwards. Um, you know, in a lot of cases, some people have put themselves in some bad spots. And we can't help everybody. I mean, we can help some people, but we can't help everybody. Um, but in a lot of cases, there may be somebody, especially with the way that the equity has built around the country with all the, the prices going up on these homes, you know, maybe it's, it's a family that's got a, a mortgage, they've got two car payments, they've got four credit cards, they've got a student loan. You know, we're going to look at how can we make those payments go away? You know, how can we eliminate monthly payments to free up cash flow? And then what can that cash flow accomplish when it's deployed properly? So it's all about having a budget, having cash flow management, and having a plan in order to achieve results. Not just doing the same old, same old and hoping something's going to be different. And next year, 
waking me up and going, man, I didn't accomplish anything. Right. So, so if they're making, um, so you take out enough home equity uh, loan large enough that like, let's say you have student uh, loan payments, instead of having that $30,000 student loan payment, you're paying a little bit a month off, you just pay that off directly if possible, right? And now you're just drawing from uh, your, your home equity loan, right? So uh, that gives you, especially if there's like some sort of credit card debt or small amount of credit card debt, this gives you the opportunity to wipe some of these high interest things away and use it almost as a, a, a debt consolidation in, in turn as well alongside and, and wiping everything away as much of it as possible, at least. Right. You know, some so ideally, ideally, the only debt that you should have would be the home equity line of credit. That way, you only have one debt and you're attacking that debt with your cash flow. There's no car payments slowing you down, getting in the way. There's no credit card debt slowing you down, getting you in the way. Now, the thing is, it's not everybody's going to be able to do that right away. On day one, you may be able to do the line of credit. It's better than your mortgage. You've got a plan. You've got a projected payoff. But as you're paying down that balance, then, okay, well, now I've got $20,000 of equity available. I can pay off that $17,000 car. Boom, that car payment goes away. Now I still have a second car payment. I can't pay them both off today. Payment goes down six, nine months, 12 months later. Now I have enough equity. I write the check. I pay off the car. So we can, ideally, it would be great if everybody could do it all at once and just right, say right. all the debts, one bucket, home equity line of credit. Now I'm going to attack that bucket. But in some cases, you have to do stages. So that's where we come into play with strategy, timing, support, um, and being able to help have a plan to not just, because getting the home equity line of credit, that's just the tool that you need. It's how you use it is what really makes the difference. That is fascinating. David, this has been an amazing conversation. Um, is there anything else you'd like to leave everyone with as far as understanding, uh, and then we'll get into your how to reach out to you. But understanding this process that we might have left out. Yeah. It really comes down to being open minded to learning because, if, you know, we just don't know what we don't know until we know it. Um, so just be open minded to learning. Pay attention to your budget. You know, look at what you have and that you're not just free spending and hoping things are going to work out. And then, you know, that's that's really the foundation. And if you know at this point that you have positive cash flow, that you're saving money each month and that you have some debts that may be able to be eliminated that could help save even more each month, then this could be something that could be, you know, worth looking into. And here's the other thing. Even if it's not today, and I have to, and I say, look, John or Bob, we did your analysis. I don't, I'm not going to recommend this for you today because we do turn a large amount of people away that just aren't ready or that this would not be in their best interest. And we're not going to set people up for failure. We want people to be successful. So even if it's not today, we're going to say, here's a couple of things that you can go do. And if you owe 30 years on your mortgage today, and it's even two years from now, and you've done those things, and you come back two years from now and say, I'm ready, and I can take you from 28 years to 10 years with only changing how you manage cash flow, it's still a victory. So it's about getting on the path. The question is, how fast can you move down that path? Right. And is there is there a situation where... Um getting approved for that home equity loan versus the mortgage is different. Is that a different, like if I'm applying for a mortgage, are there different criteria versus them approving me for a home equity? They're basically the same. There are some nuances based on the different types of mortgage programs. Um, and But typically the, if you can be approved for a mortgage, you can probably be approved for a home equity loan. Got it. Now, there are some roadblocks and obstacles, you know, it's, you know, just like for a mortgage, you know, you have to document your income for so for some of the self-employed people that, you know, they, they make a lot of money gross, but they write off a lot of expenses. And then they go to qualify for a mortgage and the bank says, you only make $70,000 a year instead of 200. You know, you told me you make 200, but your tax return only says you make 70 and you don't qualify based off of 70 because your debt ratio, debt to income ratio is too high. So there's some of those types of challenges, but here's another thing that we haven't talked about. That's okay, because we also have personal line of credit strategies that we use, because it doesn't have to be a line of credit attached to the house. It could be a freestanding, unsecured personal line of credit that can also have benefits and strategies that we teach to do that. So um, we want to we want to be able to open the door and teach these strategies for as many people as we can. 
uh, knowing not everybody's going to be ready immediately. But if you're not ready immediately, let's get you a, a short term. Here's some things you could be doing so that you can come back and be ready and then get the results. And of course, some people are, are going to be ready right away. They're going to have that light bulb moment. They're going to go through the process and they're going to start. They're going to start knocking that balance out and have a tremendous results. Absolutely. Wow. That, that's amazing. David, um, tell everyone where they can reach you, how they can reach you. Um, what's the best way? Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, so our company is Accelerated Banking. And the best thing to do would be is go to acceleratedbanking.com. And there, what we're going to do is we're going to give you a, give you access to our calculator. And that's where you can take your income, your expenses, and start looking to see, put some numbers in the calculator, and start to see what kind of, uh, of results you can get. And from there, once you're registered for the calculator, we're going to invite you to a free webinar. And that webinar is going to give you some more background about strategy and, and what this, you know, a little bit more about what this is about. And then from there, we offer a free consultation. So what I would encourage you to do is get your budget together, take a look at the calculator, come to the webinar. If that once you have that, that webinar will probably give you enough of a light bulb or make make it flicker to where you're like, I think I get it, but I need more. I, 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 you know, it's coming together. The pieces are coming together. Then what we do is get you on the phone with one of our consultants. Uh, we, we do a, a consultation by phone and through um, through Zoom to where we can share screens and, and show calculations and do that. And we'll determine, you know, what kind of results are possible. And then from there, if, if the numbers make sense, or and I should say if and only if the numbers make sense, then what we will do is explain to you our service and, and what we provide and, and invite you into our community and, and help you achieve results. So it's acceleratedbanking.com. Acceleratedbanking.com to reach out to David. Very simple, easy way to get a hold of you. Um, thanks so much for being on the Success for Life podcast. Uh, this is so unique and so interesting. When we get start to get this out there, I think a lot of people are really going to be excited because it's something I had never heard of before. Uh, I learned a ton today on, on this whole process in itself. And um, really, this can help a lot of people save a lot of money, use their cash properly, Stop giving, as you say, a, lo a free loan to the bank. We don't want to do that. Keep giving them extra money. They already have enough of it already, so we don't need to give any more. Any last thoughts, David? No, that's fantastic. I mean, I think like you just said, quit giving a free loan to the bank. We all know that the banks are scared to death that we ask for our money back and make a run on the bank. Everybody's heard of that. But we also need to remember that banks fully exist because we give them free loans. And if we stop depositing money in their checking accounts, they've got problems. So um, be one of those people that stops. That's a great point. Stop giving them money. That's what's making them rich. Mm -hmm. For the Success for Life podcast, this is Coach Schumann with David Bruce. Fascinating information, acceleratedbanking.com. Go there, check it out. Reach out to David. If, if I, the next time I'm buying a house, I'm reaching out to him first. I'm going to consult with him before I do anything else. Before I go into any further steps, I'm going to reach out to him. Um, thank you so much, David. Uh, this has been absolutely fantastic. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Everybody have a great day.